Hi, my name is Hudson Hill. I'm an extension educator with the University of Wyoming Extension. Really glad to be here, here with you today. You know, generally in Wyoming, we don't talk a lot about poultry or, or chickens. Um, you know, <clears throat> but at the risk of sounding like a coyote in a cartoon, I'll tell you what, chickens are really a wonderful species. We see chickens used all over the world in many different situations, in some situations to bring people out of poverty. And, uh, and in here in Wyoming, I've been able to teach a, a class in almost every county in the state because people are interested in having chickens around. Chickens work really well on, you know, big ranches. They work really well in small backyards and, uh, and everything in between. So <clears throat> there's, uh, there's a lot of really good things about chicken. And as we get going through the presentation here, hopefully I can give you some steps and some ideas to really get started down the right track as you think about and, and start raising chickens. So as we get started talking about chickens, I, I think one of the things I'd like to stress um, is something I stress with cattle ranchers, with sheep producers, with hog producers, people who want to do goats, alpacas, and everything else. You know, if you, if you don't enjoy the animals that you're trying to raise and produce with, you're probably not going to be successful. So one of the things that I think is particularly interesting with chickens is deciding why we want to have them, why we want to have them around, because there's really a long list of reasons to have chickens around. Uh, I have a list here. It certainly <clears throat> could be added to, I'm sure, for certain people, but uh, I'll go through it really quick. You know, <clears throat> chickens actually make good pets and companionships. We see, we see uh, kids turn them into pets. My, uh, my kids have had chickens that if they sit down in the backyard, they run over and jump in their lap just like a cat or a dog. I know um, people who are, are uh, older who don't get to spend a lot of time outside that'll feed the chickens outside of a window or outside of a door so, so that they get to watch those chickens and, and see what they're doing all day because the chickens are really an interesting <clears throat> animal and I'll talk a little bit about that uh, through the presentation. You know, boy, chickens will, will uh, take care of insects. You got uh, earwigs around or something else bugging you. You have chickens around. Um, they will control the insects. They might scratch all of the cedar bark out from underneath the bushes in the front, but they will, they will get rid of the uh, bugs. You know, one of the main reasons, and, and probably the, the number one reason people want to have chickens around is to have eggs. Uh, <clears throat> really good source of, of protein, a really good food. Eggs, uh, uh, <clears throat> eggs from your homegrown chickens are certainly different than the ones you can buy in the grocery store. You can feed chickens um, in a way that you can uh, actually change the taste and, 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 and uh, have a really healthy breakfast, if you will. Also, chickens are a source of meat. I'll talk about it really quickly in the presentation, but we've done a lot of meat chickens over the years. Um, certain things you can do to kind of be successful at that, but uh, lots of people eat chicken. Exhibition, our 4-H kids uh, like to show chickens at the shows. They make a really good uh, exhibition animal. Fats and oils, over the years we've really uh, enjoyed being able to make our own broth and use that broth in, in different recipes. Uh, certainly a different product than you'll get in the store. Uh, so I'm going to go on to the next slide here and, and add a few more, but uh, it is important to, uh, to know why you want chickens around. So going on, chickens are really good aerators. You know, they'll move the compost pile around. They'll move uh, piles of cow manure around, horse manure. Uh, they do a really nice job scratching around and aerating soil and other stuff. Also, they make natural fer fertilizers. Uh, chicken manure is, is high in nitrogen. It's a readily usable nitrogen uh, for the most part. And, and it's a natural fertilizer we can use in our yards. Uh, the last thing, I uh, actually had a <clears throat> uh, one of the participants in my class tell me I needed to add to the list, and I thought I should. <clears throat> Having chickens is, is a way to participate in something that sustains life. You know, we're, we're, part, of the, we're part of the chain. You know, we're kind of making our own food. And, and some people 
really get a lot of enjoyment out of that. And uh, in many ways, chickens might be the easiest um, and most adaptable way to start that in our own lives. Here's one of the reasons I have chickens, uh, to raise kids the right way. This is my daughter. Uh, over the years, um, you know, <clears throat> end of May, we will get somewhere between 700 and 1,000 chickens in over here in Lincoln County. And uh, my daughter usually gets to stay home from school. We'll take somewhere between 100 and 200, and we'll put them in our own brooder to, to raise for ourselves. And uh, she gets to handle everyone and dip their beaks and takes care of them. And uh, she even gets to miss school. Don't tell the principal and the teacher. But uh, it's the way that we've decided to, to raise kids. Hopefully those kids can turn out pretty decent. Um, and, uh, and that's one of the main reasons we've, we've done chickens. Along the same lines, this is my son when he was a lot younger. He's gone now. But he turned out all right. Um, he always had a summer summer poultry project. <clears throat> Learned a lot from it. Made some money from it. And uh, it was just a, a really good project for him to have growing up. And again, this is one of the main reasons we've chosen to have chickens around over the years. So let's really start talking about how to be successful with the with poultry with chickens in your backyard the first thing is, is we really need to identify the type of chicken we want I've got four chickens four types of chickens listed here the first one's the, a meat chicken it's a broiler um, there's three or four breeds that are specifically designed to grow fast um, be big and, and and create something for Sunday dinner we've uh, we've done a lot of these over the years I've taught a lot of classes on these over the years the the type of chicken that most people are inter interested in is is a layer bird there are dozens and dozens of breeds about layers i've got a slide here in a minute that we'll talk about what you might try to choose as you uh, pick what breed you want as 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 a layer bird but you're really looking at birds that produce eggs there are dual purpose birds um, I, I tell people if you're really interested in meat, go with a meat bird, not a dual purpose bird, but there are dual purpose birds and it turns out that those dual purpose birds work pretty well as layers in Wyoming. We have some little bit colder temperatures and a little bit bigger bodied bird tends to, uh, tends to work in Wyoming. The last type is bantams. Bantams, uh, work in really small ways or with people who want chickens, um, to look at, to be around, bantams are smaller. They still lay eggs. They certainly could still be eaten. Um, they're smaller. Uh, they tend to have colorful feathers and, and do some f interesting things in that way. So, here's some steps to success. There may be other steps, but these are Hudson's step to success, uh, raising chickens. Uh, you know, picking the right breed, having the right housing, really being able to take care of your chicks, then nutrition, proper use. And when I talk about proper use, that's really about how, how do we use the meat, how do we use the eggs, and how do we prepare that. Uh, won't go into that in depth in this presentation. but And then the last one, and, and really an important one in Wyoming is, we have to, before we buy birds, we have to prepare ourselves for predators. There simply is no place in Wyoming that we don't have to worry about predators. And my experience is quite often predators are the neighbor's pet cats and pet dogs. Um, but there isn't anywhere in Wyoming that we won't run into coyotes, foxes, skunks, and raccoons also. Even in, our, even in the biggest cities in Wyoming, uh, right downtown, right in the middle of our subdivisions, we, we see troubles with, with all of those predators. So this, <clears throat> the, 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 one of the most important things to be successful in a backyard chicken project is to have a plan for predators because nothing ruins a project faster than um, something running away with our birds. Sometimes when I talk about this slide, it gets me in a little bit of trouble with uh, chicken lovers. Um, you know, 
you can read all over the internet and in certain magazines how anytime it gets below 20 degrees we're supposed to heat 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 our chicken coops and take good care of our chickens but i really stress that chickens are livestock uh, once we get them through the chick stage which we're about to talk about and if we can keep them out of the wind and dry chickens are as tough as a cow and in this situation i actually have a picture of a t-rex here and a chicken and if anybody's ever seen uh, a, a young chick chase insects i've watched a three-day-old chick track a fly through the through the air that fly lands on the on the wall and i've watched that chick grab that fly off the wall um at, at three days old anybody who's watched chickens very much will see that they are tiny t-rexes and they're tough and they can do certain things so um as as we move forward in this presentation i really consider chickens livestock um, something to produce with i'm fine with you liking them enjoying them even having pets with them um, but uh, but they're tough animals so here's my chick care tips you know we get we get chicks to the mail many people pick them up at the <clears throat> at the at, at a store at a, at a co-op um, but here's the things to, to really take care of those first few days and even for a couple of weeks um, chicks are pretty vulnerable they're just a little puff of, of uh, wind um, and uh, and they're pretty vulnerable for a few days so when we get them through the mail they've gone through the mail for a day or two and they need they need to get a drink of water um, chicks the last thing chicken chicks do in in an egg is they take the yolk of the egg and they encapsulate it in their body when you get chicks you can kind of actually feel their their abdomen it's kind of distended um, so they're okay for a day or two in the mail but when they get there we really want to get them started on water uh, especially the meat birds we do not want them getting dehydrated we actually dip their beaks uh, feed is the next thing we want feed there we want it right on the ground we want them to be able to eat it I'll talk about feed here in a minute but uh, um, feeds important to make sure that those chickens those chicks when they're just a day or two old have access to feed all the time <clears throat> sorry about that the following are Hudson Hills steps to chick care uh, you know, many people, we get them through the mail. Um, they, you know, they come in a box. Many people get them through the, the, the farm stores or the co-ops. And you might even have a broody hen raise a few chicks for you. Regardless of the way you're getting them, you need to think about these things for your chicks. So the, the first thing, especially when they come through the, the mail, um, these chicks have spent a day or two in the mail. And uh, we want to make sure that they get a drink of water. Chicks the last thing they do in the egg is uh they envelop the yolk into their abdomen and they can go several days without water but when they get to the house we really like to get them a drink so we dip their beaks every one of them um and they they go right to water as soon as they feel that beak on their the, that water on their beak uh, feed you know we start with the starter feed um, we get it right on the ground right where they can get at it uh, we we absolutely want feed for those first few days all the time in front of those chicks so they can eat bedding bedding's just there to make sure that the chickens don't get too wet you know they're they're not running in filth um, but we don't want too much bedding and that's why i have it on the list a lot of people get so much bedding in there the chicks are eating the wrong things and some other stuff the what might be the most important one many days here in wyoming um is heat you know we have some cold days and and chickens chicks really need to uh be the right temperature and uh, if anybody's ever seen an old broody hen in the in the farmyard with a with a set of chicks you know she'll have eight or ten chicks run underneath her and she'll put her wings down and she'll set on those chicks she'll warm them up then those chicks will come back out and run around and scratch around and we really want to mimic that in our brooders uh, a heat lamp will take 25 to 50 50 chicks and we really want to monitor what's going on with those chicks um, we want it to be just like in the barnyard with the broody hen those chicks will run underneath the heat they'll get warm um, and then they'll run back out they'll get a drink they'll run back underneath and get warm and then they'll run back out and they'll they'll get a little bit of food if we see chicks 
huddled underneath the lamp, trying to get warm and fighting to get to that warm spot, uh, we probably have too much draft or, you know, the, the lamp's not low enough. It's, it's too cold for those chicks. Uh, what we really like to do is before we get the chickens, put a thermometer underneath the, the lamp and right underneath the lamp, we want it to be 95 degrees without a lot of, uh, without a lot of draft coming over the top of those birds. The next one's light. Chickens love light. Um, anything we do to get natural light in there, it seems to, to, to help them um, get some going on the right schedule, and they just really like light. And then, then all the environment around them, and I'll include the, the keeping them safe with this, but for those first couple of weeks, they need to be protected from the wind, the environment. We can't have them wet. Um, it's, it's really important that we do that for the chicks. Here's the slide I was talking about earlier. Um, there's lots of different uh, selection criteria to decide what kind of laying hen you want. There's lots of different breeds out there. It's always interesting to me um, what breeds people want on their place. I'm gonna, I usually go through a, a bunch of different breeds and talk about them, have some pictures. I don't have enough time in this presentation, but I will show you my least favorite and my favorite laying head on my place. The important thing to understand is just because they're my, my favorite or my least favorite doesn't mean that they should be yours because there's different criteria for different people. So here's, here's just some criteria to think about. Their foraging ability. We have, we have chickens that will go up to a quarter mile, half a mile, leaving the, leaving the roost and going out chasing insects um, and doing some things. You know, if they're foraging that far, um, we better be distance from the neighbor. Um, hopefully we've got some protection for them and not a lot of predators around. But, but there are birds that have a lot of foraging ability. And then there's others that will stick real close to home. Egg production is one that a lot of people are interested in. Um, there's, there's, certain, there's certain chickens that will raise six eggs a week. Um, there's others that will do two or three. So egg production is important. Climate hardiness. Uh, one, of the, one of the things I laugh about is lots of times people see those uh, feather-footed chickens. And they'll say, oh, those would be the best ones for Wyoming. They've got feathers on the feet that will keep them warm. And it's actually the opposite. Those feather-footed chickens are a, are a tropical bird, and they're not as climate hardy as some of our other breeds. Multi-purpose. Uh, do we really want to to uh, use the birds for both eggs and meat or something else. Behavior, and people laugh at this one all the time, but I think it's important. There's a lot of behavior differences in chickens. There are chickens that make good pets and there's chickens that don't. Eggshell color. You know, if you're raising eggs in the backyard, you probably want brown eggs or something else. Uh, white eggs, you know, you can buy any time in the grocery store. People raising them in their own yard probably don't want to raise white eggs, but maybe you do. Um, and then cost and availability. There's a, there are certain breeds of chickens that are always available, and they cost the least. Uh, one example are the sex link birds. They're easier to sort in the hatchery because they uh you, you know you don't have to turn them upside down and look at their bottoms to see if they're boys or girls if they're male or female um you they they have a they have different colors um in their they have different coloring on their heads or on their wings that that you can just see that they're a, a cockerel or a pullet so they're cheaper and more available there are other criteria to look for, but those are the ones that I think will get you started on trying to decide what breed of chicken you would like. So if you don't know who this is a picture of, you're too young. Um, this is my least favorite breed of chicken. Uh, anybody who has a little gray in their beard should know that uh, this is Foghorn Leghorn. He is a Leghorn chicken. This is the most common bird to have around. This is the most productive bird if you're looking at eggs. This bird will lay the most eggs for, per ounce of feed of, of any other breed. And still it's, it's my least favorite bird, which is kind of interesting because most of the time I, I'm a productionist. I want, I want to produce things. Um, <clears throat> this bird is a, is a really small framed bird. They're really designed to make eggs. 
they're loud, they're noisy, they're flighty. Um, they're just not my favorite birds. So uh, that's just one example of how you might decide what kind of breed of chicken you would like. Now let me show you my, my favorite breed of chicken. It's the Buff Orpington. Um, the interesting thing about this bird is they're large. They work really well in Wyoming. They, uh, they lay good, big, brown eggs. Um, they lay really good in the cold, and they, and they weather the cold really good. All of those things make them popular, and all those things make me like them. But the thing that I like most about the, these chickens is um, when they're out in the sunlight, boy, they just look like a gold bar shining in the sun. They're just, they're just really pretty. And they're stately. They just, they, they're calm. They're nice to be around. They don't make a lot of noise. They're just kind of ladylike. I, I really enjoy having these chickens around. So I, I really wouldn't be doing my job today if we didn't talk about feed. Feeding, feeding our animals, feeding chickens is, you know, one of the most important things we can do. And so, I thought I would talk about the classes of feed. Most people doing chickens are, are buying um, a complete feed, a bagged feed, and there's a couple things to think about as, as we're buying bagged feed. So the first class of feed is a starter feed. It's really for all chickens um, when they're chicks. The starter feed um, tends to be refined a little more. It's a little smaller so the small chickens can get at it. Sometimes it'll even have a... Uh, a treatment in it. Um, it. It can be a treated feed uh, to help the chicken stay healthy. The next type of feed is a grower feed. R really kind of designed for a meat type bird, a bird that we're trying to get weight on fast um, and grow. This this uh, this feed will probably have a minimum of 18% protein in it. Um, really, really to try to get those chicks to grow and grow fast. The next one is a developer feed. The developer is really designed for, for layers. A layer takes about 16 weeks to get, so most breeds will start laying at about 16 weeks. So the developer feed is designed to um, help a chicken grow and be mature by about 16 weeks. Finisher is another meat type, um, has a little less uh, protein and a little more energy in it generally. Um, just, to, just to feed those meat type birds for the last half or the last third of the production cycle to get them ready to put into the freezer. The uh, the last feed I'll talk about is a lay feed and um, it's really important to talk about this lay feed. This lay feed is for any class of chicken that's in lay, meaning any chicken that's laying eggs needs a, a lay feed and the reason they need a lay feed is because it'll generally have four percent calcium in it. We need to remember that uh, a, a chicken will lay its body weight and a half in 18 months in eggshells. So we need to provide some calcium in order for them to do that. And <clears throat> we really need to do that while those chickens are laying eggs. However, we don't want to, de to develop our pullets, to develop our young chickens that aren't laying uh, with that much calcium. It, it uh, kind of it, it, it fools the body and, and uh, fools the body's uh, ability to synthesize calcium and, and make the eggs. So when we get a lay feed, make sure that you look for and, and make sure it has the 4% calcium. If it doesn't, there's ways to, um, to add that to a chicken's diet. We can buy an oyster shell supplement or something else um, that can get the calcium to them. That's really simple way to look at feeding, but, but that's the way most people are doing it. I mentioned up front, the fastest way to ruin a chicken project is to have a problem with predators. Uh, this is my backyard. There's uh, a little over 100 birds in an electric poultry fence that's 165 feet long. The, the electric fence works for every four-footed predator everything from a weasel up to a grizzly bear and over the years we've just really decided that the electric fence flat out works there's other things you can do backyards and barnyards actually has an article on how to build a uh, an automatic door for your chicken coop 
you know we can we can use barriers and wire and other things over the years we've really uh, found out um, how effective this electric fence is call me sometime and I've got some stories for you here's another close-up of uh, that electric fence we really like it because we're rotating those chickens on grass um, from pasture to pasture it's easy to move it keeps the chickens in it keeps the predators out and it's just worked really well for us over the years I mentioned one of the most important things about a chicken project is to have your systems figured out and be prepared to do the things you need to do um, you know here's here's at the end of the season putting putting some birds into the freezer uh, having the right equipment and having a plan and and really knowing the steps it takes to get that done here's another picture of this of the same thing just just doing it doing it the right way and having a really nice product at the end of the day I really enjoy talking about chickens again my name's Hudson Hill um, you can find me at the University of Wyoming Extension um, really enjoy answering questions I answer questions for really most of the state uh, about chickens um, chickens are hardy they're easy to get started uh, but uh, if you have some problems or have some questions get a hold of me have a nice day